Here we go, it's a 4-4 game here. Cal in the corner, puts up the three, missed. Jordan Duncan comes down with it. Duncan moving up the floor. Seems to with it, top of the key, makes a play into the paint, throws it down to Rhett, the reverse layup off, but Rhett is there to get it back himself. Gets it out to Elliott, Elliott makes a play to the paint, seems to the corner wide open. Elliott is right there for the rebound. Tries to hustle for the ball, Rocco comes up with it. Cal moving down the court quickly, Rhett there trying to get the steal from behind. Gets a lob pass to Rocco and makes the layup. Great plays there. Rocco really putting that height to it his advantage right there. Cutting right to going over one of our tallest men right there, Caden Seamster, for what made it what he made look an easy layup. Rhett with it in the post. Backing down the smaller defender. Puts up the shot, missed, but it bounces off the hands of Cal and will say Comets ball. anything as that shot was missed now Cal with it top of the key seamster on number 11 balls moved around Dirks with it one of our best defenders Elliot on it throws it over to Rocco Rocco with a beautiful touch pass into the corner for number 11 he gets trapped down on the elbow or on the block sorry Cal with it behind the back moves around throws to 11 11 fakes the three step to the side, puts up the three misses, and Elliott is there to come down with the rebound. The whole stadium is loud right now. Up and in, and one. Caesar just bodies. I, they, I don't believe, I, believe, I, don't, I think they called it on the ground I don't, there. I don't believe that they're counting the bucket. Wow. I don't know how you don't count that bucket, but. Now on these inbound plays, Bryson, we've seen from previous games, they're always looking for the shooter, number 20, Jordan Duncan. Mm -hmm. Fort Scott knows that he's a real big threat into this game right mm -hmm. here. Oh, and yeah, the ball is turned over. That's just a series of unfortunate events for Chanu. Dirks bringing it up. Gets it to Spencer. Ball is just being moved around, trying to find the right shot. Spencer with it, tries to make a play. You see Rocco is being guarded by number 20, Jordan Duncan, our smallest player on their biggest. But Jordan is gonna fight. There's a switch off right there to put Larson on Rocco, ball swung around, number four has it, gets into the paint, kind of stuck, gets it back out. Another switch, step back, mid-range, pull up, is off, and Elliott gets hit in the face there, it seems. Seems to now, being guarded by a much smaller defender. You see Seamster posting up. Elliot gets it down to him. Seamster does a little shimmy, gets in the paint, and gets absolutely swatted by Rocco. The help defense, Seamster didn't see it coming. Great play there by Rocco. And number 11 comes down, puts up a wild shot. Nothing but air on that one. Now Elliot moving up the court. Larson with it. Sizing up his defender. It is poked away by number 30, and there is a layup made by number 30. Everyone is angry that that was not a foul. This gym right now is really loud. Everybody is booing the refs right now.
not even done with this first quarter yet, and no one in here is a fan of these refs. It is a four-point game. But on that steal right there, it looked like, I mean, something you see in the streets of New York playing basketball, right? Just absolutely ran through Larson, hit him, reached, reach in foul, blocking foul, everything. But nothing is called. And it leads to an easy two points for the Tigers. Couple substitutions in here for you. Rhett and Larson have both checked out and in their places is Jalen Duncan and Chris Hardy. Jalen Duncan being the defensive brother out of the Duncan brothers. He is the freshman standing at 5'8". Do not let his height fool you. He plays like a demon on defense. So they did indeed take those two points away. They took the two points away, but it is still Fort Scott's ball. I'm not sure how that is even possible. Dirts with it. Going into the paint, kicks out to four. Four makes the play, goes up with a floater and knocks it down. That is Kanan Brown with the bucket. Good little bucket made by there by Brown going right into the paint. Three Chanute defensive players going around him and him just jumping up and throwing the floater. And there's some Good defense play there by number 30, Dub Chipman there. Seems to now with it. Throws a bullet past Elliott, swinging it around the three-point arc. They're playing very tight defense on Jordan Duncan there and do not want to let him get open. Harding fakes left, goes right, throws a dime of a pass down into Jalen Duncan. He puts up the wild hook shot and knocks it down. You love to see it. Two points for Jalen Duncan. Good vision right there by Chris Harding, finding Jalen right there on the box. Jalen throwing up a tough bucket right there. Great bucket made by the freshman. Elliott there on number four, not letting him get anywhere. Now seems, er, Chris Harding, the wild shot is put up. Nothing but backboard on that one. Seen a couple of those from number five today. And that is the end of this first quarter. A wild first quarter for you. We're going to take a break along with you before this second quarter. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the second quarter right now. It is 8-6. Fort Scott leading by two. Rough first quarter for both teams right now. And for the officials. I mean, they were getting yelled at by everyone in here. Being an official is a tough job to do. And you get a lot of criticism for it no matter what. I mean, 
kind of honorable being an official, knowing that you're just going to get screamed at the whole time. I know I wouldn't do it. But. Here comes Larson Kester. Start of the second quarter, it's a two-point game. Jalen getting into the paint, gets it out to Chris Harding. Chris Harding comes in, fakes the pass, gets wide open, misses the layup, though. Now moving up the court is Cal. Cal can see Chipman, doesn't throw it to him, gets it into Rocco, takes one dribble, and then gets it stolen, and it is a jump ball, and it will be Fort Scott's ball on the baseline. Cal with it, top of the key, sizing up Harding. Gets it to the corner for number four. Makes a play into the paint, throws a pass, and there's a charge drawn by Caden Seamster. Something that Seamster does a whole lot. Puts his body on the line every game, it seems, and draws some charges. Now, Chris Harding bringing it up. Hearing the play from his coach. Seeing what's gonna happen, gets it to Jalen. Jalen can get it down to Elliott, wide open, but has Rocco on him, bodies him, and gets fouled. He's going to the line for two. Great play right there by Elliott Stevenson. Great pass by Jalen, finding him open right there. Elliott getting the foul, drawing the foul. Great play right there by Chanute offense. A beautifully drawn up play in order to get Elliott wide open in the post right there. And here comes the free throw. Elliott knocks down the first. Now Rocco is checking off. That is kind of big for the paint presence that he is. And Elliott knocks down the second. It is now a tie game. Chris Harding is now checking off. Taking his place is Jordan Duncan. Spencer bringing it up. Now Cal. Now Dub. Seems they're guarding intensely on Spencer. Dirks gets into the paint and is fouled by Elliott, I believe. Yep. And that is going to send Dirks to the line. Misses the first. You can hear it is silent up until he shoots that free throw. That's pretty good defense played by there. I believe he probably did get him on the hand there as he went up for the shot. And Dirks makes one, misses one. Now Larson. We have our starters back in the game now. Rhett Smith moves it to Larson. Aggressive defense being played on Larson. And Rhett is wide open in the paint. Pump, pump fakes, goes up with the left, misses, gets his own board, goes back up, gets it blocked. And now Dub Chipman with the ball, throws it wildly into the corner. And way over his, or his teammate's head. And now it is Chanute's ball. Both teams moving the offense really quick. As you can see, that can be a problem, as we just saw Fort Scott overthrowing mm -hmm. the players over and out of bounds. Seems it gets into the paint, the easy layup goes right past his defender. That's his first two points of the night. Shamir takes the lead. Elliott staying close on Dirks. And then it is poked out of bounds by Brett Smith there. And as Rocco is now checking back in for Kanan Brown. Now with it is number 30. Gets it into the corner for Cal. Cal tries to go baseline, Jordan stops him. Great defense played by Jordan right there. Brett with the help. And nothing is called. Everyone wanted a charge, but it is not called. And there is 
two points for Cal. It was a, it was a tough bucket right there by Dirks. Going right in, almost jumped over Rhett right there. Great bucket right there. Now, Jordan gets it down into the paint for Seamster. Clearing the way for Seamster to get into the paint and he throws one up and knocks it down. Seamster is playing incredible so far and now he is down there, he's gonna play defense on Rocco. Now, Dirks with it. Seems strong now. Elliot is now guarding Rocco. The two people you want on Rocco at all times is Seamster and Stevenson. And he is trapped in there and diving for the ball. I'm not sure if I've seen, I think it was Seamster that dove for the ball, but a foul is called. Regardless. Oh man, here we go. Cal coming to the corner. They don't get it to him. Dirks now with it, being guarded by Rhett. Now Cal with it. And the three is put up by the lefty. It is off. Rhett Smith there to get the board. Going to be Schnute Ball on the sideline. Watch number 20 here. I believe he's going to be going to that far side corner. Nope. Just going to try to get it in. Now, Larson just at the top of the key. Tries to throw it into the paint. Gets poked away. Rocco coming down. Seems to trailing behind him. And a foul is called. I don't know where. I don't even know if he got touched, but a foul is called on Seamster. Rocco at the line. Knocks down the first. Here's a replay for you. Yeah, got touched by no one besides Casper. So I think they called Casper on that foul. And he misses the second, but number 30 gets the rebound. Goes back up, misses. Chris Harden gets the rebound. Now Larson. With the ball, trying to find that Elliott in the corner. Now it's down to Chris in the post, getting triple team. Puts it up and knocks it down. Chris Harding with a phenomenal play there to give Chanute the lead. Rocco gets it and gets an easy bucket because he's 6'11". On that last play, great pass right there by Rhett Smith. Finding Chris, Chris getting triple teamed, finding that open hole, throwing up that tough basket. That was a great play right there by Chris Harding. Chris is feeling himself, gets in the paint, gets fouled, and he's going to the line. Chris now at the line. Chris knocks down the first. I got a feeling this might be Chris's breakout game of his high school career. Chris knocks down the second. Super back and forth game here. No one's really ran away with the lead at all. Now, the ball is stolen by Rhett Smith who is, a travel is called on Rhett there. It's a great steal. Mm -hmm. 
Right, Red let the ball get a little loose and got caught up between his arm and his hip right there and started walking with it. Unfortunate play. Throws it to the corner for number 30, puts up the three, misses, and going up for the rebound is the little man, Jordan Duncan. And a foul is called on them. Jordan now headed to the line. That is his first. Team Smith puts him in the bonus. Jordan Duncan. Jordan knocks down the first. You can really hear the difference between a Fort Scott free throw and a Chanute free throw. A Chanute free throw it is, here's that travel there. Right there, gets caught up between his arm and his hip. Unfortunate play. Yep, and Jordan knocks down the second. When it comes to a free throw for Chanute, you can hear a pin drop. You can hear a feather drop, to be honest. But when it comes to a Fort Scott free throw, it sounds like we're in Arrowhead Stadium right now. And Cal makes a beautiful play into the paint, puts up the two-point shot, and knocks it down. Great play by Cal, was out on the three, cut down right into the free throw shoulder on Wrap the round pass. Cut down and then just threw up the shot. It was a great play right there by Cal. There's a three-second call down there on Chris Harding. Spencer with it. Be picked up high by Rhett. Goes baseline. Travels, takes a little vacation there, but it's all right. Now, Dirks with it. Gets it back to 30, 30, pump fakes, goes baseline. Gets it poked away by Elliott, and it is going the other way. Great defense played by Elliott Stevenson right there to force the turnover, now it is in Chanute's hands once again. Elliot Stevenson is known for being one of our best defensive players right there, him showing it, getting his hands in where, in where the ball was, poking it out. Great play right there by Elliot Stevenson. Now, Rhett, or that was Jordan Duncan that set the screen, he just gets trucked, and there's a foul called, and Jordan's going back to the line. Jordan already has four points tonight. That wonderful Euro step from the very beginning of the game. Jordan knocks down the first. down the second. He just has the purest form from the free throw line and from anywhere on the court. Great shooter, great, great, great form, great everything. Number four with it, gets it down to Rocco. Rocco goes up over Rhett, can't knock it down. Gets the own rebound, passes it out, and that is Spencer there. Knocks down the three. Great play by Rocco. Popping it up, throwing it up, him getting his own rebound, finding the open person on the three. Cal going up and making the three. That was a great offensive play right there by Fort Scott. Elliott with it, there's five people, none in the paint. All moving around now. Rhett has it, top of the key, throws backdoor cut to Larson. He misses the layup, gets his own board, throws it out to Jordan. Jordan swings it to Elliott. Elliott makes a play down into the paint, loses the ball, finds it. Keeps getting it knocked away. A timeout is being called by, jo by Jordan Duncan, but they don't call it. They end up calling, I think they end up calling a jump ball. I mean, you can clearly see Jordan for 15 seconds calling a timeout right there. Not, no only, not, it, not only was Jordan calling the timeout right there, Coach Crabtree was also calling the timeout. There's multiple people on the court calling the timeout. Luckily, it got back into Chanute's hands. Now Rhett with it. Chris, wide open, doesn't take it. 30 seconds left here. Gets it down, a high arcing pass down into Larson. He misses. 
Now Durst moving up the court. They're saying to slow down, slow down. We have 30 seconds. We'll take this last shot. Keep it in our control. I mean, Dirk's playing with it loosely here. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if Elliott attempts to steal it at some point here. Dirk's trying to ISO Elliott. Gets to the paint. Goes up, misses. Rocco comes down with it, puts up the free throw line, jump shot, knocks it down. One second left, Rhett heaves it up and misses. That's the end of this first half. One point game, Fort Scott in the lead. We'll be back for this second half after this. Off to the final lap from Pee Wee's to the weekend pros. Our team of doctors can help with the diagnosis and treatment of sports related injuries. Wherever you are in your sports journey, Labette Health Sports Medicine team has the training, experience, and skill to repair, restore, and renew. For more information about Southeast Kansas leading orthopedic and sports medicine program, go to labettehealth.com. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, located right across the street from Royster Middle School in downtown Chinook, is in the business of making you feel better, faster. With three licensed pharmacists, the Medicine Shop has the knowledge to know the right drugs and the proper dosage to ensure your safety. If you're not quite up to your game, Medicine Shop offers delivery to your door. The Medicine Shop, a proud underwriter of the Chinook Blue Commons.
Yeah. Welcome back to this third quarter action. 21-20, Fort Scott Tigers leading by one. Rough start. I mean, I want to say it was rough. It's, a, it's been a really great game so far. It's been far, a really. great game. Rough start, though, first quarter. A lot of back and forth from both teams. A lot of physical, physical stuff mm -hmm. going on on the court. We're looking at a pretty good game here, Bryson. What are you thinking? Well, no team has really ran away with it here. This quarter is huge for Chanute. Chanute has been known all season to throw games in the third quarter. I'm just, I'm just going to say it plain out like that. Like, we have been, we have struggled in the third quarter, and that's caused us to lose games that we shouldn't have lost and make games closer that really shouldn't have been. In the last playoff game, third quarter is what kept Lamigo on the court, really. So now just Chanute needs to clean that up and play really good here in this third quarter. I believe the highest lead of today is four points. Mm -hmm. Chanute was up like 18 to 14 at one point, I think. But here we go. Rocco, top of the key. Jordan now on him. Screen is set. Dirks being guarded by Jordan. Now Spencer gets it down to Rocco. Elliott there. Ball's passed to Dirks on the corner. Larson locking him down, but a foul is called. And that's going to send Dirks to the line. That's Larson's first foul. Dirks here at the line. He has three points tonight. Makes the first. There's, he did indeed get him pretty good there. That is a foul. And Dirks makes the second. He has five tonight. Larson now moving up the court. And there is Jordan Duncan setting the screen, just getting destroyed again. That's Spencer's second foul here tonight. Now Larson is passing it in. Elliott gets it top of the key. Oh, and Rhett just mishandles the pass. The ball is turned over, moving up the court. Dirks has it now. Ball is just being moved around. Number five gets it, gets fouled, plus one. He's going to the line. Chinook really starting rough to this first quarter. We're a minute in already. Fort Scott has the lead by five right now. Let's hope Chinook can turn this around, not let that steal get to their heads. Yep. And that is a five-point swing already in this third quarter. Six Chinook. point. Well, it was 21 to 20. So now, Seamster with it. In the corner is Elliott. Just swinging it around the arc. Gets it to Elliott. Face the three. Gets it poked away. And it is going to stay Chanute ball. Chanute just needs to get one bucket. And the momentum will shift back. And they will be able to play as, play as they were playing in that second quarter. Now, I believe. Elliot goes back door. I believe there has not been any made threes from either team. Yeah. Rhett, back door cut. Gets fouled by Rocco, but there's no call. Now, Dirks has it, puts up the three. Misses. 30 is there to get the board, though. Cal makes play into the paint. Wow. 30 now in the corner. Moving around. Spencer with it. Spencer still just dribbling around. Gets it to Dirks.
Dirks gets into the paint. Passes out to 11, swings to the corner, 30, puts it up. And it is good. That is Dub Chipman with three points there. Good ball movement right there made by now Fort Scott. Now goes up plus one, he's headed to the line. That's all Chanute needed to get this momentum back with them. Seems are now gonna head to the line. On the play previous to this, it was great ball movement right there by Fort Scott. Finding number 30, Dub Chipman, open in the corner right there. Easy three for him, and then. Seamster knocks down. The free throw. That is the end, or that is a timeout called by Chanute. We're gonna take a break with you. We'll be back after this. Welcome back, and we are here for this. Third quarter. Go. Welcome back. Five minutes, 10 seconds left in this third quarter, 29-23. Fort Scott leading by six. Teams, or Cal goes in, puts up the shot, misses, hurts his ankle. Not something you like to see. This is not something you want to see for Fort Scott. Cal has been a big player for this game. Cal having seven points here. He's a real crucial player to this Fort Scott team. Let's hope he's all right. in a little bit. He's able to walk off the court with the help of our team doctor here. Seamster puts up the three, misses. Elliott comes in soaring for the rebound, and it is poked out. And it is going to stay Chanute, Blue Comets ball. See, oh, it's tipped, but it goes right to Rhett. That is very lucky there. Chris with it, gets it to. Larson, Larson is moving out there. And jump ball is called. It's going to be Chanute ball. Seamster with it in the post against Dirks. Fakes twice, goes up, misses. And now moving up the floor is number 11. That is Spencer. Four now with it, moving around. Gets it to Dub. Dub wide open. Normally he would shoot those, it seems, but not here, I guess. Dirks with it. Schnutes now in a zone. Spencer wide open. Doesn't shoot. Passes it. Back out of Dirks. Moving it still. Spencer wide open. Puts up the three. It is off. And Dub is just right there to get the rebound. No one even touched him. He gets the easy bucket. It is now a eight point game. Almost stolen there. Larson able to keep control of the ball. Elliott with it now. Larson 
Goes to the bucket, misses the layup. And now, Dirks is moving. He's being picked up very high. Spencer with it, down to four, down to Rocco. Cross to the corner, swings it back to Dirks. Beautiful ball movement to set up the three. Dirks follows the ball, gets the rebound, and knocks it down. Great ball movement right there by Fort Scott, swinging it around, finding Dirks out on the three-point, him missing, grabbing his own rebound, and cutting just straight to the rim. That was a great play. For years, Jared Gilmore and Phillips PA has been providing quality financial guidance to local individuals and businesses. Their expertise ranges from basic tax management and accounting services to more in-depth services such as audits, financial statements, QuickBooks support, and payroll. Jared Gilmore and Phillips PA has backed Chanute's youth in all their endeavors from the classroom to extracurricular activities. They're proud to help support the youth of Chanute by underwriting this KFEX broadcast. Hello and welcome back to this third quarter here. Two, just under three minutes left. After that foul was called on Larson, it is Fort Scott's ball. 10 point game here. Chanute has not been able to pull it together in this third quarter, scoring only three points to this, at, at this point in the game. Now, number three with it, that is Dirt, moving around. Posting him up all the way at the three point line. Throws it, wild pass stolen, Elliot Stevenson running down the court. Puts up the layup and it is good. That is the play you want to see from one of your star players to give this team some energy. Great steal right there by Elliott Stevenson, taking it back all the way to the rim. This is the momentum Chanute needs right now. Mm -hmm. This whole crowd here in Chanute is electric right now. Let's hope this Chanute can capitalize off that and come back. Now, number 30, Dub with it. Gets around, stops, gives it to Dirks. Larson guarding Dirks. Trying to get it down into Rocco. Who, and there's a charge called. A incredible play by Jordan Duncan, giving up his body for the cause. And now it is Chanute's ball. This is the momentum that we've been talking about this whole quarter. Um, I don't know if you saw Bryson, but Jalen Duncan, the freshman, guarding 6'6", Rocco in the paint right there. Jordan coming up, getting the charge. Great play. Jordan with the three, it's up. Misses, Rocco comes down with it. Oh, I got excited right there. Thought that was gonna be. The whole, whole crowd was on their toes uh -huh. right there. Now the ball is thrown out of bounds and it is Chanute's ball. You can really see in this last minute and a half, the momentum has shifted so much. Fort Scott's offense is struggling. Chanute's offense has been more dialed in than they have the rest of the quarter. Now. Jordan Duncan with it. Gives it to his brother. Jalen now. Gets it to Larson. Back to Jalen. Has Rocco on him. Dribbles a couple times. Gets around Rocco and is fouled. Now, that is their fourth foul of the quarter. So one more foul and Schnee will be headed to the line. But this, is, this one's gonna remain on the baseline. As you can see, Cal Cozen is checking back in he was the one that got injured earlier. It seems to be feeling better now. Not only is that Fort Jordan Scott's- in the corner, puts up the three. <sighs> Not only that is that in. Fort Scott's fourth foul, that's also Rocco's fourth foul that too. That is huge, I didn't even realize huge, that. Huge, huge right there. Rocco, as you have seen tonight, is a big key player. 6'6", 
they need those rebounds. They need those easy layups that they find him in the paint. He's big. If Chanute comes back and if Chanute comes back from this and he's not in, that'd probably be the main reason. Seems to now playing very aggressive defense. Larson now locking up Dirts, not letting him get anywhere with it. Post the ball free. And a foul is called on Larson there on the arm. That is Larson's third foul. Chris Harding now checking in for Larson. On the sideline, gets it to Dirks all the way in the backcourt. We'll see what they do. I'm guessing they will just try to hold the ball for this last shot. Spencer has it now. 17 seconds. Elliott making him make a move. Dub Chipman with it now. Seamster on him, seven seconds. Dub dribbling around, doesn't take the screen. Dirks has it. He's gonna have to pull up. Shoots from deep and misses off the front of the rim. That's the end of this third quarter. One quarter left for these some of these kids' lives. We'll be back after this. Ordered in Fredonia, Ehlert Construction Services was founded in Southeast Kansas as a small regional contractor and has now grown into a national heavy industrial construction company with regional offices across the United States. The Ehlert family is proud of our Southeast Kansas roots because we know that the people of Southeast Kansas make great employees. At Ehlert, we know that employees are our greatest asset and we're committed to investing in the growth of our employees and our community. Ehlert Construction Services, proud to support the youth of Southeast Kansas through the Firescape Coffee House and KFEX Firescape Radio. Whether you're completing home repairs, weekend projects, or planning your garden for spring, Cleaver Farm and Home 2103 South Santa Fe has a carefully selected inventory for all of your paint, hardware, and building needs. Cleaver's also offers free delivery for cat and dog food if ordered online at www.cleaverfarm.com. Cleaver supports the youth outreach of the Firescape Youth Ministry and is happy to underwrite KFEX Radio. Thank you, Cleaver family. We appreciate your support. Hello and welcome back for this final quarter. Eight point lead for Fort Scott. It's been quite a low scoring game, quite a defensive game here. And Chanute is looking to make this fourth quarter comeback. Towards the end of that third quarter, they were able to start playing like we normally see them play. And now we're hoping we can carry, they, they can carry that over into this fourth. Here we go. Dirks with it, being guarded by Seamster, the matchup we've seen all night. Dirks getting shifty, gets it out to Spencer, who knocks down the three. His second three-pointer of the night here. Now it is a 11-point game. Chanuta's got to start making shots. And ball is turned over by Chanute. And a beautiful block by Elliott. How are we going to call a foul there? Oh. These refs. Oh, okay, never mind. That was, that was, that was bad. That was not good. Dirks makes the first free throw. And he makes the second. There's a full timeout call. We're going to take a timeout with you. We'll be back after this. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy, located right across the street from Royster Middle School in downtown Chanute, is in the business of making you feel better, faster 
With three licensed pharmacists, the medicine shop has the knowledge to know the right drugs and the proper dosage to ensure your safety. If you're not quite up to your game, Medicine Shop offers delivery to your door. The Medicine Shop, a proud underwriter of the Chinook Blue Commons. Unbelievable. Sparklight is unveiling unlimited internet for just $25 a month. Get reliable 100 meg internet for just $25 a month for 12 months with unlimited data. That's unlimited internet. Call 877-469-3057 or visit sparklight.com slash savings. Sparklight, a new breed in high speed. Welcome back to Chanute. Seven minutes, 15 seconds left in this fourth quarter, 38-25. Tough game, close game. Let's hope Chanute can come back and possibly come away with this win. Now Rhett with it, gets it into Seamster. Seamster makes a play in the paint and he gets the bucket and is gonna head to the line for a free throw. Foul was on Dirks, that's his third. Rocco is still yet to appear back in this game. We will probably not see him in tor to, until towards the end. And yeah, probably the second half of this fourth quarter. Seamster misses, but Rhett gets the rebound. Back out to Seamster, he shoots to... He traveled, I guess. That could have been huge for the Comets to cut into this lead. Dirk's with it now. Now it is just a one-on-one -on -one at the top of the key. Number 30 with it now. Now number five shoots the three, it is off. And there is Larson with it. Gets it to Seamster who mishandles the ball. And now number 11, top of the key. Now number, thir number three with it, sorry, that's Dirks. Just dribbling around, top of the key. I guess to waste time here. 30 with it, that's dub. Dub Shipman passes it, now Dirks has it. Jordan Duncan. Falls to the ground, able to put his hand down, stand up still. Now 11 with it. Moving around, Chipman has it, going to the paint, gives it to 11 now. Now Dirks with it. See, they've ran through about 15 shot clocks here. This is why Chanute, or this is why Kansas is hopefully gonna get a shot clock in high school sports eventually. Now Chipman with it. I mean, what do you do? You have to foul, I guess. That is Seamster's third. Rocco is now back in. And that is Chanute Ball. As it was poked away by Jordan Duncan. Jalen Duncan checking out for Larson now.
Larson bringing it up the floor. He's got Dub Chipman guarding him. Larson gets the ball poked away, but it goes out of bounds. It's going to remain Schnoop ball. 11 point game here. Jordan Duncan with it, throws it to Larson. He throws it to the corner for Rhett, doesn't shoot, goes baseline, gets fouled. Now Schnoop will have it on the baseline. Chipman's third foul of the game. Jordan Duncan puts up the three, misses. Rhett's there, doesn't get the rebound. Now Dirk's bringing it up the floor. And he gets fouled. And now on the sideline will be four Scott Tigers passing it in. Jalen, the defensive wizard, back in. Rocco has it, bounce up. It was the ball! The ball hit him! night here in Chanute, Bryson, what'd you say? Huh? Said rough night in Chanute, what'd you say? Yeah, something. So. Oh, there you go. Oh. So, we're trying to get a replay of where Rocco got hit in the face by a basketball, fell to the ground crying, and a foul ended up being called. I mean, getting hit by basketball is, I mean, it does hurt. I don't blame Rocco, but the refs, I guess, thought it must have been a hand. he got punched in the face by Mike Tyson himself. There's another foul called on Seamster. <laughs> Rocco at the line. Rocco makes the first. And he makes the second. He said it won't work. And there's a foul called somewhere. I don't know. Seems to fouled out. It's not something you want to see. This could possibly be Seamster's last high school basketball game. And to be fouled out out of it kind of hurts. This is the first. I don't know what. How is that? That was the foul that was foul. called on Caden. I don't understand. Makes the second free throw. And finally a foul is called on red. Rocco is gone. They called that on four? Wow. 
That's a timeout. We're going to take two commercials with you. We'll be back after this. Home Savings Bank is a platinum underwriter here at the Fire Escape Coffee House. Home Savings Bank has been serving the Chanute area since 1886. Customer owned and customer driven, Home Savings Bank, located at 214 North Lincoln Avenue in Chanute, Kansas, is here to serve all your banking needs. Whether your needs are checking, savings account, safety deposit box, lending, or online banking, Home Savings Bank is here to help. Home Savings Bank is located on the internet at homesavingschanute.com. Home Savings Bank is committed to the youth of Southeast Kansas and helping the ministries at the Firescape Coffee House. Missing that human touch at your bank? At Community National Bank and Trust, you'll be able to talk with a real person. Community National Bank is small enough to know you, yet big enough to offer the best products. Your busy lifestyle requires banking options like mobile deposit and people-to-people pay. With locations in Southeast Kansas and Southwest Missouri, Community National Bank and Trust can help keep your finances safe and your spending smarter. Online at mybankcnb.com. Community National Bank and Trust. Federally insured. Locally awesome. Member FDIC. Welcome back. Fourth quarter, three minutes, 54 seconds left, 41-27. Red Smith at the line right now. Shooting two. Red makes the first one. Red makes the first. Here's the foul. That is the foul. Rhett misses the second. And number 30 ends up coming down with the rebound as it's being slapped all over the place. Spencer throws a pass to Dirch. Dirch now trapped. Gets it to Rocco, throws it down to four. Four doesn't do anything with it. It's just taken right out of his hands by great ball movement by the Comets to get Elliott a wide open bucket. Larson, Larson coming up by coming up by behind the Fort Scott player, stealing the ball, ripping the ball right out of his hands, throwing a nice one right to Jalen. Jalen finding find Elliott is a, is a nice play right there. There's a foul. I'm not sure who it was called on. Foul call was on. Jalen Duncan, the freshman. And Chipman at the line. Makes the first. Now ball's moving up in the hands of Larson. Larson gets it to Jordan. Jordan makes play into the paint, goes in over Rocco. Gets hit, no foul. Who would have thought? Now Jordan Duncan playing defense. Dirks with it. Now Chipman. Chipman gets trapped, throws it to four. Four gets it to. Finally, a call goes our way. That looks like quite a foul there, but it is our ball. There's a jump ball called now. It's going to be Schnee's ball. Larson now moving. Elliott with it. Gets into the paint. Gets the easy layup. Elliott is great at finding those open lanes right there, going straight to the basket. Mm-hmm. He's just an overall great player, offense and defense. Ten point game here. Red fouls. They send Durst to the line.
first one is missed. Makes the second, 11 point. 11 point game there. Elliott now moving up the court. Stops, gets it to Rhett. Rhett moves into the paint. Misses the layup, but Jalen Duncan is there. Gets it to Elliott. Elliott puts up the three. Misses Jalen again. Elliott going in the paint. Gives it off to Rhett. Rhett pump fakes, goes up, misses. Jalen Duncan again. Gets it to Jordan. Jordan puts it up. Hey! Jordan knocks down the three-pointer. That is an insane possession for the Comets. We're going to stay here with you through this timeout. An incredible play all Jaylen, the way around for the Comets. Jalen Duncan getting three offensive rebounds right there. Elliott passes right to Smith right there. Jalen getting another rebound, finding his brother wide open. From NBA range, it knocks it down. Incredible play there from Jalen. That was just one of the three offensive rebounds. He has, he is the energy guy for this team. Cuts it down to eight point lead with two minutes left. This comeback is still, like it's still imaginable. It's not, that, it's not impossible. That could be a big momentum switcher right there. Mm -hmm. Now if Jalen, that, that three for Jordan Duncan is huge. That's his first three pointer of the night. Now if he can continue to knock those down, because if you know Jordan, you know he gets on hot streak. Wow. <laughs> he gets on hot streak. Wow. <laughs> two for two. He gets on hot streaks. And once he makes one, there's a good chance now, more are coming. Now, this did happen in the Iola Mustangs versus Chanute game here in Chanute. Chanute went down in the third quarter. Jordan heating up. I believe he went four for five with having 12 points. And Chinook came back and won that game. Ball stolen. Now Rhett with the steal. Jordan moving up. Gets it to Rhett. He gets it back out to Jordan. Jordan puts up the deep three. Off. Elliott is there to try to get the rebound. Misses. And it has to foul. That could have been huge. Now, Dub Chipman at the line. Makes the first. Dub puts up another, misses. Rhett comes down with it. Now we're moving. Larson with it. Larson, they try to steal it from him. Now Rhett. Gets into the paint, puts up the layup, makes it. It's a seven point game here, minute 18. Now, Larson fouls, but they don't call it now. And they finally call an intentional foul. 59 seconds left. Sends number 11, Spencer Goldston to the line. Now a Jordan Duncan three will put the lead at four. Depending on these free throws, it is. De yeah, depending on these free throws right here. Makes the first. Fort Scott, knowing they want Duncan in these last 59 seconds. Second free throw is good. Elliott moving down the court quickly, gets it to Larson. Larson puts up the three. It is good. It is now a six point game. Get it in the cow. He's trapped in the corner. There's nothing he can do. And a timeout is called. 
30 second timeout. We're gonna take a break with you. We'll be back for the last 43 seconds of this game after this. AFEX Firescape Radio programming is made possible in part by the underwriting efforts of Sonic Drive-In of Chanute. Sonic Drive-In of Chanute does not consider community involvement a sales gimmick or a public relations ploy. They see it as a way to be a good neighbor and as a way to have a positive impact on their community. It is for these reasons that Sonic Drive-In of Chanute is a proud underwriter of KFEX Firescape Radio and the ministry efforts of the entire Firescape ministry to the youth of Chanute. Welcome back to Chanute. Fourth quarter, 43 seconds left. Fort Scott leading by six right now after Larson just hit that amazing three. It's a six point game, this is huge. Dirks is trapped, it gets stolen, gets it to Larson. He doesn't shoot, he goes to the paint, gives it off to Jalen, Jalen to Elliott, Elliott puts up the corner three, misses, but Jordan Duckett gets it. And now it, Larson puts up the three. Hey! And it's good! Boom, boom, boom! It's a three point game! 23 seconds He's left! Again. Almost gets stolen, now moving it up to court. They have to foul, they have to foul, they have to foul. He puts up the shot, he gets fouled on the shot. 15 seconds left, three point game. Rocco going to the line, these free throws are huge. Rocco at the line. This is the, the first one. That is huge, that is huge. There's the Larson three point one from the same spot that he made the other one. Here comes the second free throw. He knocks down the second. 15 seconds left, full timeout. We're gonna take a timeout with you. We'll be back after this. Ordered in Fredonia, Alert Construction Services was founded in Southeast Kansas as a small regional contractor and has now grown into a national heavy industrial construction company with regional offices across the United States. The Alert family is proud of our Southeast Kansas roots because we know that the people of Southeast Kansas make great employees. At Alert, we know that employees are our greatest asset and we're committed to investing in the growth of our employees and our community. Alert Construction Services, proud to support Support the youth of Southeast Kansas through the Firescape Coffee House and KFEX Firescape Radio. Hello and welcome back. There's 15.9 seconds left here in this fourth quarter. Now, Chanu, because of that first missed free throw by Rocco, Chanu does not need two three pointers. They could opt for a two pointer coming out of this break. We will see what gets open as you. May see here in a second. War, number three, Warwick Olsen is checking in. He's a three-point shooter, that's for sure. All five of these guys on the court can hit threes. Chanu has to go full court, get a bucket. Most likely actually do need a three because they're gonna have to foul afterwards. And Larson moving up the court quickly. Almost gets a poke away, gets it to Warwick from NBA range, he puts it up. Misses. And Dirks gets fouled there. Dirks will head to, head to the line. And that may be the end of the game there. Dirks at the line. Now if Chanute does end up losing this game, this will be a lot of our players' last game. Senior, Caden Seamster, Jordan Duncan, Lars Custer and Red and Red Smith. Second free throw. He might miss on purpose. He doesn't. Twelve or seven seconds left. Timeout called. We're gonna stay here with you. Now, for this to be possible, there has got to be a very quick three-pointer. And then you have to get a steal and another three-pointer. 
to win this game. A lot on the line here. Warwick Olsen still in the game. He missed that first three, but don't be fooled. He is an elite shooter. As you can see, no, he, Warwick Olsen has not been checked in at all this whole entire game. And first three he pulls is right at the logo. Okay, now, now you see Jordan and Warwick over there and Elliott. Now a three-pointer has got to be made. Larson needs to get the ball and then needs to move up the court incredibly fast, get it to Jordan or, or Warwick. Larson pulls up deep three, misses, and that is the game. Chanute loses. Fort Scott wins. And that is the end of this game. We'll see you next year for some more basketball, football, you name it.